preparation of benzide roll. Attention, diethyl ether is highly flammable and can form explosive peroxides. It's highly recommended to read more about the dangers of working with diethyl ether. Bromobenzene is flammable, can cause irritation of the skin, is toxic to aquatic life and may cause long-term adverse effects in the aquatic environment. Benzaldehyde is toxic if swallowed. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. For this reaction a 3 neck round bottom flask is placed on top of a stirring plate. A condenser is placed on top of the flask. Usually a drying tube with calcium chloride is placed on top of the condenser. This was not available, so the condenser was closed with parafilm and teflon ribbon and connected to a gas washing flask with sulfuric acid. This will allow pressure compensation without wet air entering the apparatus. Before the condenser is filled with water, the apparatus has to be heated. A heat gun is used that can reach temperatures of 300 degrees C. Every part of the apparatus has to be heated for a few minutes. It cannot be heated for too long, but for too short. The heat causes traces of water to evaporate that are always bound to the surface of glass. In the gas washing flask it is absorbed by the sulfuric acid, otherwise the water could disturb the reaction. A Bunsen burner can also be used, but this would be more dangerous than useful with flammable solvents close by. In addition to that, the glass could break easier. The apparatus was heated for about 15 minutes. When the apparatus has cooled down, 2.3 grams of magnesium are added to the round bottom flask. Here cut up magnesium ribbon is used. There is special coarse, highly pure magnesium used for Grignard reactions that is way more expensive. Powder must not be used because it would react too fast and the reaction could become dangerous. Then anhydrous ether is added until the magnesium is just slightly covered. About 0.7 milliliters of bromobenzene that were taken from 9.6 milliliters were added. The rest of the bromobenzene is mixed with 30 milliliters of anhydrous diethyl ether and filled into a dripping funnel that is connected to the flask. In the best case, a Grignard reaction starts by itself after about 5 minutes. When the reaction doesn't start, the flask could be heated by hand. If this doesn't help, a very small amount of iodine could be added. This activates the magnesium by reacting with its surface. A few drops of the bromobenzene ether mixture could also be added or the flask could be heated very carefully with a heat gun. There are lots of reasons why a Grignard reaction doesn't begin immediately or doesn't work at all. A few examples are that the magnesium is not reactive enough or the ether and apparatus are not dry enough. When the reaction begins, the ether becomes cloudy and balls without additional heat. This happened after about 45 minutes. When this point is reached, the rest of the bromobenzene mixture is added dropwise while stirring. It is important that the ether is just boiling slightly. When it's not stirred, the addition takes way more time. When the ether is boiling too vigorous, a water bath can be used for cooling. The bromobenzene reacts with the magnesium in an exothermic reaction to form phenyl magnesium bromide. The bromobenzene is added in small amounts while stirring and cooling. When the reaction becomes too vigorous, a lot of biphenyl is formed as a byproduct. When the addition is finished and the ether has stopped boiling, the mixture is heated under reflux for 30 minutes. Then the mixture is left to cool down and cooled further with an ice bath. While stirring, a mixture of 7.2 milliliters of freshly distilled benzaldehyde and 7.2 milliliters of anhydrous ether is added very carefully.
In the addition, a violent reaction takes place. The phenyl magnesium bromide reacts with the benzaldehyde to form a precursor of benzhydrol. When the addition of the benzaldehyde is finished, the mixture is again heated under reflux for 30 minutes. After that, 20 grams of crushed ice are added to the cool mixture. This causes the compound to hydrolyze while benzhydrol and magnesium bromide hydroxide are formed. Next, 20 milliliters of half concentrated hydrochloric acid are added slowly. This causes the magnesium salts, which are formed in the synthesis, to dissolve. The magnesium has not been consumed completely by the reaction. It is recommended to cool the flask with a nice bath, because otherwise the ether can begin to boil. At the end the flask contains two layers. The upper layer is the organic layer which contains most of the product. The other one is the aqueous layer that contains magnesium salts and a small part of the product. A separatory funnel can be used to easily separate the two layers. Since only a small one was available, the layers had to be separated in several steps. The aqueous layer was extracted two times with 20 milliliters of diethyl ether to increase the yield. At the end all of the ether layers were combined. The organic layer was washed two times with 10 milliliters of 40% sodium metabisulfite solution for several minutes to remove residues of unreacted benzaldehyde. Then it was washed with 10 milliliters of diluted sodium carbonate solution and finally with 20 milliliters of distilled water. This will remove residues of the hydrochloric acid. The organic layer is dried with anhydrous sodium sulfate and the flask is closed. In this case it was left to sit overnight. The solution becomes clear when it's dried. That enough sodium sulfate is used is indicated by loose particles moving around when the mixture is swirled. The sodium sulfate is filtered off and the ether is distilled off. In the laboratory a rotary evaporator is used for this step. First the water bath is heated to 40 degrees C and in the end it is heated to 80 degrees C. The receiving flask is cooled with a nice bath. The residue is a yellow oil which is mainly benzhydrol and traces of biphenyl. After a few days the oil becomes solid or even forms needle-shaped crystals. The raw product can be purified by recrystallization in petroleum ether. This was the synthesis of benzhydrol. I hope you enjoyed. Please rate and comment.